This week, Labour and Sinn Féin came out with their alternative budget proposals and in both of those proposals, they plan to scrap the first time buyers grant. I was a bit surprised that both parties are turning their back on first time buyers, perhaps not overly surprising for Sinn Féin because they want everyone in social housing. When Labour published their proposal, I reached out to you guys over on Instagram and asked you, were you in favour of scrapping the first time buyers grant? 71% of you came back in favour of keeping the first time buyers grant. Caveat, that was a small poll, only a few hundred people answered the question. When Sinn Féin published their plan the day later, I again reached out to you guys over on Instagram and asked you the question why did so many people think that the first time buyers grant was a bad scheme I got a number of DMs and a number of responses to that question in favor of the first time buyers grant suggesting that it would be a terrible idea that if a terrible idea that it would be scrapped I also got lots of uh, messages in regards to the uh, demand only uh, scheme and also a few people DM me that it only benefits developers in this video I will discuss the demand side element and the developer element but I want to touch on the falsehoods that are being pushed out by media and some social media accounts around the scheme as they're illiterate to the fundamentals of the first time buyer scheme and totally miss the main aim of it. There is no doubt whatsoever that the scheme increases prices for new homes, but that misses the entire point of the scheme. I think there is an issue that too many people have bought into the myth that the first time buyer scheme is a demand side only scheme. I know it's sometimes hard to go against the grain, but please share this video on your social media account so more people can understand what the first time buyers uh, scheme is all about and what the main aims of it. And while you're at it, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well. The first time buyers grant aims to address two fundamental issues, affordability and rising construction prices. The main goal of the first time buyer scheme is to make it easier for people to get on the property ladder. The second aim of the first time buyers grant is to make more housing development sites financially feasible to actually build. Meaning by design, increase the price of new homes so more development sites become financially feasible to actually be developed out. I will explain this in more detail shortly. First, what does the first time buyers grant actually do? It allows first time buyers claim back tax of, that they've paid over the last four years up to a maximum of 30,000 or 10% of the value of the house. This assists first time buyers save for deposit or perhaps people who are in high rental accommodation save for deposit as well. It only applies to new homes under 500,000 as well as self builds. Therefore, it doesn't apply to any house that's above 500,000, which rules out a huge amount of new bills around Dublin. On a slightly side note, as far back as I can remember, government have always given first time buyers a helping hand to get on the property ladder. I think when I was in college, the first time buyers grant was about four grand, but there was also huge reductions in stamp duty uh, for first time buyers, which is, was a big discount on the property price because at the time, stamp duty was nearly 9% on some properties. My point is, generally speaking, governments have always tried to help first time buyers get on the property ladder. And I'm really surprised that Labour and Sinn Féin have decided to scrap the current scheme without proposing any alternative. So let's look at some of the numbers around the first time buyers grant and see if it actually could increase prices throughout the market. In any normal year, 45 to 50,000 houses are sold in Ireland. As the first time buyers grant only applies to houses under 500,000 and new builds, it only probably impact 5,000 units in any one year, or let's say 10% of the overall market. When you also look at the total stock of properties or residential units in Ireland, we are looking at about just over 2 million. The first time buyers grant can only actually influence probably 0.25% of the total stock in Ireland in any one year. The total value of residential sales in Ireland is normally around 19 billion. The allocation to the first time buyers grant is 126 million. Therefore, it only accounts for 0.066% of the total cash that's coming into the market. So therefore, I don't think it's gonna have a huge impact on the overall prices of property. The mortgage market is going to be approximately about 10 billion this year. Let's just say 10% of that is made up of exemptions over the 3.5% rule. 
this would be 10 times more cash coming into the market based on exemptions than the first time buyer's grant. And it arguably the first time buyer's grant goes uh, to address affordability and new supply more than any, any exemptions ever would. But I never hear people complaining that these exemptions are demand side schemes only. There is no doubt whatsoever that the first time buyer's grant adds to the price of new homes, but it's actually designed to, and I'll say it again, it's actually designed to. I think this is the fundamental issue that media and some social media accounts can't wrap their head around because they don't understand the economics of the scheme and they label it as a demand side scheme and label it as a bad idea. Contrary to popular belief, residential land plot values have not increased greatly over the last 10 years. They've perhaps gone up about 20% over 10 years, which is not a huge increase in 10 years. So why is it that new builds are costing so much more now than they ever have? Well, realistically, construction prices have gone up nearly 100% over the last 15 years. There's a whole host of reasons why construction costs have gone up. The rising construction costs have made a huge amount of residential development sites unfeasible to build out. Therefore, those sites are not going to get built out until the actual market price for those homes increase to make it financially feasible to build out those sites. Some sites are cheaper to build than others, depending on soil conditions, depending on how close they are to road or services. Other sites are ex extremely expensive to build because perhaps they're old industrial uh, sites and there's contamination issues and it adds millions to the build cost. Developers will build out the cheaper sites first, but as construction prices go up and up all the time, those sites, even though they're cheaper to build, become less and less feasible to actually build out. Let's just assume the average price down in Kildare for a three bed family home is 370,000 and the average buyer for some buyer could afford that. That may open a handful of sites for developers to go off, take the risk and build out those at that price. However, with construction costs going up, a number of other sites will not be open to build out because it's just too expensive to build and they're not getting a good enough return. The government come in with a scheme with the first time buyers grant scheme and add another 30,000 to people's pockets, i.e. those buyers who were able to afford 370 are now able to afford 400. That pushes the price, the average price of the uh, new homes up to 400,000, which unlocks a huge amount of sites now that developers can make financially viable and build those out, therefore increasing supply. I'll try to explain that a little bit on a graph. So let's just uh, explain this quickly with a supply and price graph. First here you have your price line, zero at the bottom, and let's put a million on the top. Then you have your quantity line, i.e. the number of uh, sites possibly to be uh, ever to be developed. Again, starting at zero, and let's say there's a thousand sites in this example at the very end. We apply a very simple supply line, starting at zero and rising to the right. At a zero price point, zero houses are going to be developed. But let's say the market price is 370,000. Let's assume 100 sites can be developed or are feasible to be developed at that price point. And let's assume the first time buyer's grant comes in at 30,000, pushes up the market price to 400,000. This unlocks a number of development sites that were originally too costly to build out. Let's say it unlocks an extra 50 sites. In turn, this is increasing the housing supply, hence why it helps supply. I'm not saying it doesn't impact the demand curve. It definitely hits the demand curve. And what actually happens with the demand curve, it kicks the demand curve out, meaning more people are able to buy a house, more people are able to afford to buy a house at all different price ranges. I can explain that on a graph as well. But basically what that means is more people can get on the property ladder. And is that not the whole point? We're making it more affordable for people to get on the property ladder. So let's just look at it from a graph point of view. You have a simple demand uh, curve. What happens is when you add the extra 30, that demand curve is pushed out. But what you'll see is that there's more people will be able to afford that unit at different price points depending on where they are in the market. Hence why it actually does impact demand but it impacts demand by allowing more people afford homes. So as we kick out the demand curve, more people are actually able to afford a home. That's a good thing. More people should be able to afford a home. The issue isn't the problem with the scheme itself. The 
issue is the fact that not enough houses are coming on stream because the planning system is too slow. I know there was a lot of hype around this time last year with the first time buyers grant when the government increased it from 20,000 to 30,000. Granted, some developers definitely took advantage of this. They took advantage of the increase of 10 grand and they also took advantage of the fact that demand was increasing for homes outside of Dublin and they increased their prices. If you were in their shoes, would you do the same thing? It's important to remember that this happened around July, August of 2020. After months of the construction sector being closed down, developers would have had to continue to pay their interest payments on those sites while they were shut down. It's also important to remember that construction prices and supply of construction material was uh, going through the roof, inflation was going through the roof. And a lot of the sites that we're talking about with these new homes, they were in certain phases of development and hadn't yet been completed. Therefore, developers were gonna to have to build in extra costs for these houses to be built. So they took the opportunity, and I think most people would do the same thing in their scenario. But I hope this simple saying kind of illustrates the importance of the first time buyer's grant. A bird in the hand is far better than two in the bush. And basically what it means is you're getting 30 grand in your hand right now to get yourself on the property ladder. And even if the property price has increased by 30 grand because of this, you are only paying that 30 grand over the lifetime of a mortgage, i.e. 25 years or 35 years. And it doesn't have the same impact on affordability because of the time value of money. So even if prices go up by 30 grand, you get 30 grand in your pocket. It makes it more affordable for you to have your deposit and makes it more affordable for you to get on the property ladder sooner. You're welcome to agree with me or disagree with me. And I'd love to know what your viewpoints are in the comments below, so please share. I'm just putting across the point, the first time buyer's grant has a limited impact on the overall property market in terms of increasing value. It definitely increases value for homes, new homes under 500,000 but it's actually designed to do that to create more supply because it makes more housing development sites feasible to actually build out. I'm not saying it's a perfect scheme. It has lots of faults, but it is something there that helps people get on the property ladder and makes it easier to save for the deposit. And I think first time buyers need to be uh, looked after. And it's just a shame that Sinn Féin and Labour have decided to scrap the first time buyers grant without actually proposing any alternatives. If you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please share this video as well, because I think it's important to address the falsehoods or the myths that are out there that the first time buyers grant is only aimed at the demand side.